Tesla update 2023.44.30, aka the big holiday update of 2023, is rolling out now to Tesla owners worldwide. It includes things such as new apps, parking assistance for non-USS cars, access to more cameras, and has some hidden features that you should know about. So let's get into it. Also, this video is sponsored by Test Stuff, but more on them later. So first up, what cars are getting this update? And the good news is pretty much all of them. Some features may be limited if you have an older vehicle like pre-2020 or just an older MCU, but if you purchased your Tesla within the last three to four years, then you should be getting everything here. Now, if you have yet to get the holiday update, please be aware that Tesla has already released four different versions of it. But from what we can tell, these additional versions are just bug fixes. For example, I got 0.2, but you may get 0.4, or 0.3. And Tesla is rolling this update out in waves, so manually checking for an update probably isn't going to help. But if you want to try but don't know how, we'll just simply go into your car's settings, go down to software, and then scroll down. And you'll see down here underneath of navigation data, it will do a whole like looking for software update. If you're able to get a software update, please remember that you can only manually check once every 24 hours. However, if your car is part of a wave update, then it doesn't matter the last time you manually checked. You might manually check and then an hour later, a wave gets sent out and your car gets the update. So the first feature is the big scary recall. And well, all it's really doing is moving the please apply force of the steering wheel down here from the bottom to the top and making it slightly bigger, increasing the car's strictness for how attentive you need to be while approaching stop signs and stop lights, along with adding a suspension for normal autopilot. So just like FSD, if you get suspended five times, then you're grounded for a week. I personally think it sucks that the nag is going to be even more annoying now when they said that it was actually supposed to get less annoying, but it is what it is. And I still find my hand method of holding the wheel still results in little to no nag. Next up is FSD beta 11.4.9, which is something else entirely that we're just not going to talk about. And that's just because most people don't have FSD beta. Next up, the strictness of the cabin camera is being increased, which from what I'm hearing, it's very sensitive now with you looking at your screen. And I mean, I don't really know how it could get worse as it was already super strict. Like anytime I tried doing anything on my screen, the car would yell at me after like two seconds, even if I was just trying to quickly change the navigation or a song or something. I feel like a lot of people actually throw on autopilot for those one to two seconds that they're not 100% paying attention to the road because they need to quickly do something on the screen. But now if the camera's just gonna yell at you, what's even the point? Now, real quick, I wanna thank Test Stuff for sponsoring this video. And most of you know, but I still like to give the disclaimer, I do own Test Stuff. But if you're looking for floor mats, center console inserts, screen protectors, mud flaps, 18 inch Uber turbine wheel covers for the Model 3, we specialize in just super minimal, very little branding, logos, Tesla accessories that just improve your overall driving experience while still keeping that very simple Tesla feel. So yeah, if you're interested, I'll have them linked below and you can use code YouTube all caps for 10% off your entire order. Back to the video. Alternate routes while driving are now a thing, which is nice, I guess. Maybe if there's a sudden road closure and you need to quickly switch routes. This next one is a fun one, custom lock sounds, which is exactly what it sounds like. Just head on into your toy box and into the boom box and you will now see lock sound. You can enable it and choose from a selection of pre-installed ones, some of them being already on your Tesla from like the horn sound, but some of them are new. And what's even cooler is that you have the option to use your own via a USB stick. You just put it on the SSD that you use for Sentry mode and I'll have the one that I personally use linked down below. Though it does need to be a WAV file under one megabyte and named Lock Chime and just kind of playing with a few of these, if y'all can hear them. <laughs> oh, the chirp one's great. I think I'm gonna use the clown horn. Park Assist Upgrade, which is another big one, as your car screen will now display a high fidelity 3D representation of the world around your vehicle. And while I would show you here, but I can't because it's only available currently to non-USS cars for obvious reasons, Tesla has confirmed that it will come to USS cars eventually. And well, I've seen some USS owners kind of upset that their car doesn't have it, but from what we can tell, it's not really that good. 
It looks cool though. Next up is a new game, Castle Doom Bad, along with the ability to play games on and connect headphones to the rear screen in the SX and New 3. On the topic of games, Beach Buggy Racing, Polytopia, and Vampire Survivor are getting updates. And I don't know if this was there before, but the release notes mention that the PS4, 5, and Xbox controllers will have rumble effects in select games. That could have been there before. I've never connected a controller to my car, but I'm might and like fully beat beach buggy racing. Your car will now automatically call 911 if you've been in an accident and the airbags deploy. It works automatically as long as your phone is connected to Bluetooth and there is a countdown timer in case it accidentally triggers and you can just cancel it. Now for probably my favorite new feature, navigation symbols along your route. This includes speed cameras, stop signs, and traffic lights. And please note, because I've seen a lot of people say that they're not seeing it, this requires premium connectivity. The reason I say this is my favorite new feature is because this is the only feature I've missed having since switching away from Apple Maps, like that was like two years ago now. In my opinion, it just drastically helps with your situational awareness. Like, oh, am I turning at that random turn or at the stoplight? Well, now you can see that you'll be turning at the stoplight or the stop sign. However, it does seem like the navigation voice hasn't been updated. For example, Apple Maps will tell you to go past this light and turn right at the next one. So fingers crossed that gets updated soon. Also for the speed cameras, there is no audible alert, but we'll talk more about that when we get to the hidden features. Trip Planner is now on the mobile app. You could originally set a destination and you know then send it to the car, but it was only just set one destination and that's it. Now you can add stops, and edit your trip just like you can in the car. Now we have two updates that have to do with cameras. First is when live streaming the cameras from the car, you can now access the left and right pillar cameras. This effectively now gives you a 360 degree view of your car as the only two blind spots were in the front left and the front right but now you can see them with access to these cameras. Here's to hoping that these cameras now start recording for sentry mode. Because I do know that Tesla has in the past been able to access people's B pillar camera footage in the event of like an accident or like an insurance claim. Automatic blind spot camera warning is next. And as long as you have the blind spot camera setting turned on in the settings app, there will now be a red indicator on the camera view if another car or object is in your blind spot. So let's see if we can do that. Well, it's not gonna tell me anything here, but there is something there. Maybe it's because we're not in drive. This is more than likely being done to bring it in line with the blind spot indicators on the new three and Cybertruck. Those are little red dots. This is a, a red little bar. It's, yeah. I also think it's just great for quick glanceable information. We also have a brand new app, which is the Apple Podcast app. I mean, if you don't use Apple Podcasts, then you probably don't care, but if you do, then that's great. And of course, with every holiday update, now comes a new light show. This time being the arrival, which I can't play due to copyright reasons, but I can show you the car dancing. Now, some of the other minor updates. Shuffle your title playlist and albums. I don't have titles, so I can't demonstrate that, but I just assume it's pretty self-explanatory. Next is Apple Music and Spotify will now show your profile image to help better indicate which account you're on, which I assume only happens when you have multiple accounts logged in. I only have one, so it's not showing anything. Using the search function will now also include related link entries to the owner's manual. As you can see here, I've typed in tire pressure and down here at the bottom are going to be those link entries. Let's click on wheel and tires. And as you can see here, it shows us our offset for which wheel we have, tells us our uh, torque spec that we need, just everything you can need right here. And you can now filter between two charging speeds when searching the map for charging locations, more than 70 kilowatts and less than 70 kilowatts. I swore I thought you could already do this, but I guess not. Now for those hidden features, and I'm gonna include 2023.44, as if you're like me, then you came from dot .38. And dot .44 had some undocumented changes. First has to do with the new park assist, as you now have adaptive reverse lines on your screen. They will match with the backup camera reverse lines and should further aid the usefulness of the new 3D world your Tesla is building. Next up, and this one may be stupid for some, but I think it's cool, the Beach Buggy game mentioned new vehicles, and most would assume that that's the new Cybertruck, right? However, they also added the Dark Helmet 
which is a fully modded out plaid from Unplugged Performance. I don't know, I think the recognition is just super cool. Now getting back to the symbols along your route, speed cameras, stop signs, and lights are mentioned in the release notes, but the following were also found, and I don't know if these are live yet because I've only personally seen lights, signs, and speed cameras, but they are average speed camera, caution lights, construction, danger zone, fixed speed camera, mobile speed camera, police, and red light speed cameras. And if you're asking how they're getting this information, we don't know. They could be pulling from the Waze API, but we're not sure. Nonetheless though, this is great. And my dream of Tesla building out its own Waze-like system where the cars see stuff and auto report it for other Teslas that are coming by, may not be completely out of the realm of possibilities. Now, some of the hidden features in point 44 are, if you're a radio station user, your favorited stations are now pinned to the top of the stations tab instead of being its own separate tab. As you can see here, I have my favorite country station pinned to the top. If you're wondering where the messages and calendar app went because you access them through the phone app, like me, they're now only accessible through their corresponding apps in the all app menu. So now you can only access them through here. Speaking of the all app menu, well, the apps in there have now been centered instead of being left side aligned, which you can probably tell because it looks a little weird at first. If you'd like to mess around inside of the service menu, you'll be happy to hear improvements have been made, including a new software section screen, HV interlock loop section, and an air suspension panel if your vehicle has that. And lastly, this wasn't really a part of any update. It kind of just randomly happened, but Disney Plus got removed Sort of. If you don't know, Tesla's CEO doesn't like Disney CEO anymore, apparently. And so I guess they're looking at removing Disney Plus. I don't know. It's only disappearing if you've never used Disney Plus in your car. If you have, then it should still be there. As you can see, I have mine here. However, if you haven't, there is a way to get it back. Just head on into your browser and simply just look up Disney Plus, and then it'll automatically open the app. And then when you go back, it should now be there. But those are all the new and hidden features with this year's holiday update. Let me know your thoughts on this year's holiday update down below. I know some have said this year's update has been super lackluster, but I personally don't mind it. Plus, I mean, remember what happened last time they made a big change during a holiday update 2021? People were upset for months. I feel like they've just hit their stride. And what we currently have now in terms of just the overall package is really good. Excluding automatic windshield wipers. Those still really, really suck. If you're new here and want to see more Tesla stuff in your YouTube feed, then feel free to subscribe. I'd appreciate it, and I will see you all in the next one.